Joining us right now is Joanne Lippmann. She's a Yale University lecturer, also a CNBC contributor. Her latest op-ed in the Wall Street Journal this morning argues that the return to office mandates are a disaster for working moms. And Joanne, hi. Hi, Becky. I, I be didn't here. realize this is the first time you've been in studio with us. It is. Since COVID, it's the first time, and I'm so happy to be here with you. It is great to have you here. So uh, women's participation in the workforce skyrocketed at a point where, because when COVID first hit, women had to stay home. Women of small children, I should say, had to stay right. home because kids weren't in schools. There were all kinds of things that were happening. So a lot of moms quit. A lot of moms dropped out of the workforce. And then what happened? Right, right. And a lot of women lost their jobs because of the, you know, they were in hospitality or travel, right? right? Um, and then, oh, and at that time, if you recall, we were in the she session and everybody said, you know, 30 years of gains wiped out. It's never coming back. Janet Yellen said this could be permanent scarring. And here we are, almost exactly three years later, April of this year, we reached this record level, 75% plus every month since then of women in the workforce. And what's really interesting, women of young children under the age of 10, it's almost 80%. And clearly what happened is you had remote and hybrid work, and then you pair that with the rollback of the COVID restrictions on schools and daycares, and suddenly women, particularly college-educated women who have jobs that you're able to do remotely, suddenly they're able to participate in the workforce in a way that they never were able to do before, which is fantastic. The problem is now with the return to office mandates, we are sort of disconnecting. We're sort of really not acknowledging how important this is for women. And we, we really have, um, there's a potential that we could really roll back and reverse some of those gains. And we've seen that to this point because some <clears throat> of the mandates that come in require that you're there three days a week, maybe four days a week. Is, is, is that a problem for women too? So it could be. Uh, look, when you and I, and I'm older than you are, when our kids were <clears throat> when our kids were babies, like if anybody ever said to me, you only have to show up three days a week. Right. Could you oh imagine? Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be the greatest gift ever. Um, but we are in this world now where you've got women who have, you know, two and three and four kids who, who were marginalized before. And I think about, you know, when my own kids were babies, I, you and I have stayed in the workforce the whole time. And we know how brutal it sacrifice. is. sacrifice. We know how brutal it is. Yeah. Most of my female friends who were super, you know, educated, intelligent, had great jobs, most of them either went part-time, they got mar mommy tracked, if they could afford it, they quit. And we lost all of these really high potential women. Okay, let me push back a little bit. Sure. Um, what happens to the people who are forced to come into the office when their coworkers aren't? Um, how, how do you manage that situation? How do you manage that system of what feels like inequity? Are there pay differentials that go with it? Yeah, so first of all, the thing, I mean, I'm not arguing for that you should never come into the office. I mean, you know, I've been a manager for many, many years, right. and I know how important being on the premises is, you know, for collaboration and mentoring, just learning how to do your job. I mean, my very first job was at the Wall Street Journal, and I was right out of college, okay. <laughs> right, right? Yeah. And how, do, how did we learn how to do the job? Is your everybody in the office Everybody, you. these more senior journalists around you, that's how you learn. So, so I'm a big believer that we do need some of that time. I think the issue is that some of these return to office mandates, they're coming with increased flexibility. And, you know, I was talking to the folks at Charter who study um, future of work, and they were saying CEOs are getting more and more and more rigid as they go. They're really yeah. pressuring. And the rigidity, I think, is where the problem comes in. Okay, I'll, I'll even take the other side of that, though. Sometimes the problem is not a rigidity. The, the idea is that there are people who feel like they get to do what they want and people who feel like they don't get to do that. And if you looked at a lot of the workers who came through the entire way through the pandemic, um, you know, there, there are people who couldn't work from home. And yes. you've got a workplace full of people who have to be on site in front of customers and those who don't have to be. That can be to lead to a lot of different resentments in the workplace. Yeah, look, there, there's no perfect solution here. But the point that I'm making, though, is we now have, <clears throat> we have now created a system where there's a lot of women who need to work and also want to work, right. who were not, who were marginalized before. So now they have an opportunity. So what we need to do is think about how do we create a workplace where we do have the in-person time, mm -hmm. but perhaps where we're not marginalizing people who 
maybe you know need a little bit more flexibility. And by the way, we only need that little flexibility not for all time, right? right? It's basically when your kids are little, and that's why I'm saying the big percentage increase. Or when they're sick or something. Or when they're sick, but the big percentage increase is really for women with little kids, like preschoolers, kids under 10, very young kids. That's where they need the most flexibility, and that's where we lose them and if we become too rigid. Yet. And right. then their careers are derailed, and even if they take off time and they want to come back, they will never reach those professional heights. And so we want to make sure that we don't lose these really high potential women. I guess it's a it's a thoughtful process for, yes. for managers to look at and, and kind of find ways to do that flexibility. And by the way, I think managers are more likely to be flexible when you have a tight labor market like we've had and you need headcount, right? Yeah, it, absolutely. It, it, it's, it's, it's less easy to pull off uh, at a time when you have higher unemployment levels. Yeah, very true, very true. But I do think, you know, look, it's a positive that we have more women in the workforce, and we right. need them in a, in a tight labor no, market, and they contribute to the economy. Plus, these are women who truly, truly, truly want to be in the workforce. So right. let's try and think about hey, I've, I've ways. Seen for years, if you want to find the most efficient people out there, find working moms. No kidding. They are efficient workers. <laughs> they find ways to get things done very quickly. So yeah. true.